Hi hey everyone, today I'm talking about uh, responsive tables. My name is Davide Rizzo. I work at the Suncorp Group, um, mainly do a lot of banking, insurance type of stuff. Um, I'm a UX designer and front end developer, and my role kind of overlaps over the two. So, got the idea for doing this talk themed around get, um, Game of Thrones. Uh, for one of the ex colleagues I work with who had all these um, examples with Game of Thrones text. So, thank you. Maybe I shouldn't have chosen this guy to represent me, given what happens. So, responsive tables. So, responsive tables are something that is quite challenging um, in the modern world of CSS. Uh, the type of tables that I'm talking about is the tables that are used mainly for, for website layout for content, things like comparison tables. I'm not really talking about the really large data grid tables like spreadsheets. There are a lot of articles on the web about how to do things where they're collapsing and hiding um, columns for those really large spreadsheets. And I'm just going to go into to tables that we really want to keep all of the content on mobile, but we want to optimize the, the order in which we view it. So the important thing to, to think about is with a table, the, the important thing is that the cells need to align in height and width with all of their adjacent um, members. That's what's important about it. So, uh, thinking about this, um, I work on star guides mainly, so the tables that I need to design have to be super flexible. I don't know what type of content is going to be in them. I don't know whether they're going to be a web application or a website and what sort of information they'll be showing. So I have to think of all of the different ways in which a table can respond. So some of the methods in which um, I've seen designers try to approach this um, are as follows. So it can squish like this on a screen, which is the most basic. It's what a table normally does. And it's important to, to understand that you don't always want it to do something fancy. Sometimes just, just mo moving together on a, on a small screen is perfectly fine. You can scroll, so when you move down to a small screen, you can just scroll left and right. So that may not be the most optimal thing um, usability-wise, but it's an option. Um, I'm not going to go too much into this option today because it's very easy to do with CSS. You just wrap it in an overflow auto container. The more challenging ones are where we want to collapse the rows and columns completely. So this really depends on the order of the content that we have. So if, if your table reads more in a, in a horizontal way where the rows are important, what you might want to do is collapse the tables, the cells like this. So the rows end up as kind of mini tables going down the screen. Um, and that will work for anything with a content that's, that's horizontal. Similarly, if, if your content is uh, going vertically down the screen, you really want those columns to collapse on top of each other. This is the one that's a fair bit trickier. Okay. So that's cool. Let's just figure out how we can do that. So first I want to talk a little bit about normal table markup. So I did a bit of experimentation because the solution that I had that I wanted to, to get, I really wanted it to be the most accessible, best practice uh, thing I could think of. So the first thing I did was do a little bit of accessibility testing on normal table markup. So hopefully this will work because I'll show you what happens with, um, with Chromebox. So here we have an example of a, a normal um, table. And this has the, the standard kind of best practice markup where you have you know, the header group, you have your table header cells which tell you that this is a header for the, for the column and it will read down the page. So let me just turn on Chromebox. No sound. Can I get the sound? Quote, best practice quote, table markup. Okay, so this is what we have with the table here now. So if I just kind of increment through this table, 
So here it's read um, the legend for the table, but it hasn't told me that I'm on a table. It hasn't told me that it's a legend at all. Now if I just keep pressing down. Table, it is dark. So here it's told me that I'm in a table. So that's great. And it's told me that that's the text in there. But it hasn't mentioned that this is actually a heading for a table. And it hasn't mentioned that this explains which order I want to read the table. So if I just move through the markup, it just goes across regardless regardless of all the, the, the markup I've got there, there's nothing in here that a screen reader seems to, to, to be understanding or there's no easy way to, to, to move down, down the sort, rows. Sort, no and obviously, Ghost. can't pronounce Direwolf very well either. So, Responsive oh, better turn that off. Checkbox checked. <laughs> So all of those fancy things that you put in tables, they don't really make it that much more accessible for a screen reader. Uh, the other tricky thing about standard table markup is doing that whole responsive columns thing. That's a bit concerning. So as part of this journey to find this, this ultimate flexible responsive table, I went through a series of different solution modes. Uh, the first one was to generate uh, the one that the, the content authors for our content management system came up with was the simplest one. It's just generate two completely separate tables and just hide and show them across different breakpoints. Uh, that is okay, it works, but it's kind of like running an M site. You've got code duplication, you've got two different uh, tables. Uh, and one of the other challenges when you're doing this with uh, Stargard like components, you have no idea what's in the tables. So when you duplicate something that's in a table, it may have unique IDs, it may have code that's initialized those elements, and that's all gonna break. You can also, the, the next uh, approach I took was to rearrange the table with JavaScript. Sure, we got JavaScript, we can use it where we want to, and we can just simply pull the table apart and rearrange it however we want. And that kind of has the same shortfalls. The problem is when you pull apart a table, you have to manually delete and repaste elements on a page. So that kind of breaks any, any kind of initialization component, and you have no idea what's inside that table. It could be other complex features like tabs or accordions, and that's going to kind of break. And the last approach was doing whatever we could with CSS to try and take a table and just make it display in more flexible ways. Now the real problem there is it's, it's the wrappers around the rows. Once you wrap something in a, in a container, you have no way to kind of pull out those pieces and rearrange it with CSS. Okay, it's all right though. Then I discovered Flexbox, and I hadn't used Flexbox too much, uh, and I really dived in and, and experimented with what I could do. So this is a table here that's, that's row-oriented. It's read um, horizontally across the rows. So you have the columns here, and if we have a look at the markup, it's really simple. So you've just got a container, um, which is your Flex container, and inside you've got cells. The important thing here is because we don't have that table markup anymore, you still need to tell um, screen readers for accessibility purposes what's going on. So that's why we're actually using the H3s and the strong tags and the, the correct semantic markup so that we'll read out the headings in order. And here, because the order is exactly how it reads down the page, the screen readers will read that as well. So to explain how it works, it's quite simple flexbox. It's display flex and it's flex wrap. So that just means that it's going to move along the page horizontally and when it gets to the edge of the page and it can't fit, it's just going to wrap to the next line. The way we get it to display in a nice grid is to tell it that it has four columns and each column is 25%. So at the point where it gets four, then it just wraps over the next line. So it's fairly straightforward. Um, one little trick is to make sure that you have overflow hidden, otherwise your table won't always be in alignment. So now if we want to tackle this from a, a column perspective, the really nice thing is that the markup is absolutely identical. It's in exactly the same order and it'll re be read by screen readers in the same way, but the only thing we introduce here is this ordering property. So what we do is we set the order based on the row that you want it to be on. So everything with order one will be on the first row, order two will be on the second row, and that just rearranges this table like this. So we can't do this ordering automatically with CSS because we don't know how many rows they are and we'd have to 
essentially create an infinite number of, number of classes. But to create something like this manually is trivial and to do it from a CMS or with a, uh, a live, uh, program like React or Angular, it's, it's absolutely trivial. Lastly, we can style the cell. So all we need to do is add a class for a different background, a different border, and we can create um, these really nice tables. We can do this in any combinations we want because it's just a simple class that's applied to uh, each, each cell. So uh, the HTML just tells you which cell is in each, each, each style. And here we just style the, the different um, cells with the styling we want. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, one thing that was something to, to try and think about was how we stop the borders from um, duplicating. So if we get rid of this, these styles here, you see all of the borders are duplicated. That's because the cells are simply sitting on top of each other. So to offset that, we simply just push the margins back at the same depth of the border size. And that, that really works quite nicely. And it doesn't matter what cells are on top of each other, what colors. So finally, we have the, the collapsing. So now that we have a table that's constructed with flex rather than table markup, um, it's quite trivial to collapse it. The table order is exactly, the markup order is exactly the way that we want it to display. All we have to do is on small screens, make it display blocks. So here we have a column class table. And when we pull this down to small sizes, it just pops on top of each other. So it's the same content just appearing on, on top of one another. And the, and the row table does exactly the same thing, but the rows appear on top of each other because that's the way that the markup is ordered. So that works really nicely. So now that we can collapse into columns and rows, we can do fancier things. So we had a few designers who really wanted the tables to collapse into tabs and how to think about that. And now that we can collapse into columns, you can just do things like this. So what we're doing is just hiding and showing each column and toggling them with a tab. You can do the same thing with accordions. We have accordion rows here and pull it down and each row, each row has its own accordion and they can open and close. And the nice thing about that is because it's all still there on the, on the page, you can move in and out and it still remembers all of your, your settings. So the markup for that is once again quite simple and logical. With the tab table, you simply have a list of tabs at the top of, inside the table at the top. And with the accordions, you just have a, a, an accordion button at the top of each row. Um, so there's a little bit of JavaScript that just does the toggling ability. Um, you can do that with any kind of tools you want. Um, it's really not that long. It's just a tiny bit of um, JavaScript there to do the toggling. And that works really well. That's Pretty happy with that. So there's plenty of other things you can do. It's a flex table, so content alignment. Just like in a table, we can align our content in any way we want, um, up, down, left, right. It's actually more flexible than a table um, because it has all of the flex features. Column margins, we can even introduce uh, margins between the columns um, simply by offsetting the width of each column and that and here you can see like the gaps between them and when you respond down to a small screen they can disappear as well. Zebra striping. Zebra striping was the last challenge and obviously uh, it's very common to kind of stripe your, your tables um, in a way that looks really nice and makes it easy to read and I did a lot of research on this one and it turns out that the ability to do this isn't something that can be done with pure CSS. And the reason for that is, once again, to do that in CSS, you need to know the number of rows and you need to basically have a CSS um, style for each odd row. Uh, that can't be done with an nth, say an nth child selector because it can't do it an infinite amount of times with an infinite amount of even rows um, in that pattern order. Um, but the the, the technique for doing it is still quite simple. All you have to do is add a stripe class on every cell that has an even order. 
So once again, very trivial to do with JavaScript or um, a CMS or React or something like that. So that's not too bad. Last, one of the last things is to think about column spans and column rows. So um, row spans are not possible on a flex table because uh, the table just isn't oriented in a top-down way because we don't know the height of the, the table. Um, column spans can be done, but you really have to think about how this is going to behave responsively, and you really need to design the tables from a mobile-first uh, perspective. So here we have a table with a couple of cells that, that um, span over the columns. And you kind of have to think about what this actually going to do on a mobile screen. You could duplicate some of the cells, or you can um, just show them. Yeah, that's kind of a solution there, but I'm not sure that that really makes a lot of sense, depending on your table content. Oh. Uh, lastly, uh, because this isn't actually a table, you're just styling different boxes on top of each other, you can still use the technique of styling the the cells in any other type of markup. So we could have uh, a box um, that's just a header inside a section. We could have an unordered list. We could have a definition list, which is just um, a two column table uh, with the first column being a bit narrower. That can collapse as well on a small screen. And lastly, we can still style normal table mark like markup like this. If there's some urgent need to still use normal tables, this uh, can still be done. You can move all the styling along with it. Okay, we're good. So, of course, there's that one guy who causes problems. Uh, IE8, IE9 don't support flex, but the nice thing here is that because your markup is ordered logically um, in the order that you want screen readers to read it, it's also going to fall back to that for old browsers that don't support Flex. So for the old browsers, as long as the content is shown, it might stretch across the whole screen for full browsers, but you know, the, the, the numbers for those old browsers are diminishing very rapidly now. That's it. Thank you.